Buddha once said that there's no one internal quality more useful for awakening than appropriate attention. Asking the right questions, looking at things in the right light. And appropriate attention essentially comes down to seeing things in terms of the Four Noble Truths. And the truths here are not issues of just saying, well, there is suffering, there is the cause, there is cessation, there is a path. It's expressed in this way. This is suffering. In other words, you look directly at what suffering is or what stress is. You try to identify in your immediate experience what the cause of suffering is. This is the cause of suffering, the origination of suffering, what arises together with suffering. This is cessation. This is the path. In other words, you look for these things in your direct experience. This is the framework of questions you bring to the direct experience. Where is the stress? Oh, it's right here. Where is the cause? You try to find that. And when you're looking in this way, you try to apply the, the duties appropriate to each of these experiences. When you experience stress, you try to comprehend it. Comprehending means knowing it so well that you develop dispassion for it. When you can identify the cause of stress or the origination of stress, the duty is to abandon it. The cessation of stress, which is dispassion for the cause, that's something you want to witness, that you see for yourself, satchi katabang. And finally, the elements in your experience you can identify as path. Those are things you want to develop. You want to nurture them, strengthen them, bring them, as I say, to the culmination of their development. As the Buddha points out, and I think it's Majjhima 2, that while you're engaged in this, issues of self and not-self, and ultimately even being and not-being, are irrelevant. You try to look at experience purely in these terms, those terms of stress and the other Four Noble Truths. Questions of, do I exist? Do I not exist? What will I be? What have I been? Those all fall to the wayside. You try to develop the factors of the path, in particular right view, right mindfulness, the right effort to bring the mind in a state of right concentration. So that you can comprehend stress. First, when the mind is rightly concentrated and you leave concentration, it's useful to ask yourself, where is the stress coming in? As soon as I leave concentration, what additional stress is there? That's one way of developing dispassion for those forms of stress outside of the concentration. Attachment to the body, attachment to feelings, perceptions, ideas, even attachment to sensory consciousness. You want to notice that when you leave concentration, these, these things get heavier more burdensome, the stories you build around them, the sense of who you are that you build around them, the sense of the world that you build around them, all of which is called becoming. It becomes a burden. It becomes, to use the John Mahabhu's phrase, a squeeze on the heart. And you want to see that. You want to appreciate that. Detect it every time it happens. So you can really comprehend the stress and suffering, in other words, really develop a sense of dispassion for it. So 
That's developing the path for the purpose of comprehending suffering. And then as you comprehend it, in the act of comprehending it, you start letting go of the cause. You feel dispassionate for the craving that leads you there, and you want to witness that. Well, that helps you be more and more willing to look at even subtler levels of stress. For you've seen the pattern in operation, that when you let go of the cause, you really do experience a great relief, a sense of well-being. And ultimately, when you've taken care of all your attachments outside of concentration, that's when you turn on the concentration itself. And John Munn has an interesting phrase. He says, there comes a point in the practice where all Four Noble Truths just turn back into one. Like everything is to be let go. Everything is to be comprehended to a point of dispassion, so you let go even of the path itself. If you say that even in concentration there is an element of stress, there is inconstancy stress, a fluctuation in it because it is conditioned. And when you develop this passion for that, you totally let go. And because you're doing it was what kept it going, and the letting go there also brings about cessation. Everybody wants to know what happens after cessation. Well, there's no after sensation. What's left, what's not left. It's called complicating non-complication. Because with cessation, there's another dimension, which is outside of space and time. And outside of space and time, there's no after. There is no leftover or not leftover. Even the concepts of existence and non-existence don't apply. There's a passage where the Buddha is talking to Gajayana Gota. Gajayana Gota asks him, what really is right view? And the Buddha gives the, the subtlest of all of his definitions of right view. When you're simply watching stress arise. The idea of non-existence doesn't occur to you as you watch stress pass away. The idea of existence doesn't occur to you. You put your mind into a position where you're simply watching stress arising, stress passing away. At that point, the concept of being, like a being, sattā, doesn't occur. Notions of existence and non-existence don't occur. And in that state of mind, the idea of whether a self would exist or not exist is totally irrelevant. That's not one of the issues you're meant to ask when you're dealing in right view. You're simply meant to ask, is this stress? Yes, this is stress arising and passing away. Anything that you see arising and passing away, you learn to see it all as stress. That, of course, would include the path. And at that point, in the John Munn's phrase, when all the Four Noble Truths become one, everything let, gets let go. And a motivation for wanting to do this is the Buddhist statement that the fruition is the ultimate happiness. As Jean Sawat once said, once you attain ultimate happiness, you don't care whether it's existence or non-existence, or if there's somebody there or nobody there. Those issues are all irrelevant. Because existence and non-existence basically have meaning in the context where they're still suffering. And we cling to the idea of the existence of a self or the non-existence of a self because we hope that that will lead, lead us away from suffering into true happiness. But when the true happiness has been attained, been realized, those concepts are no longer are no longer relevant. So 
There's a passage where the Buddha once said that belief in annihilationism is the highest of all wrong views because it helps lead toward dispassion. But we don't want to hold on to the highest of wrong views, we want to hold on to right view, which rephrases all the questions in terms of the Four Noble Truths. And as you look, simply where right now is their stress? When you can identify it, try to comprehend it. Develop whatever qualities are needed to comprehend it. And you comprehend it as comprehending means that you develop the kind of knowledge that leads to dispassion. You realize you don't want to continue creating this, feeding it. And as you stop the process of feeding it, the suffering disbands. That's all that really matters. For as the Buddha said, all he taught was suffering and the end of suffering, stress and the end of stress. And it's all an issue of doing. Suffering is something that you cause, or that is caused by factors in the mind. And the path to the end of suffering is something you do that you, takes you there to the end of suffering. So he's not concerned with the whatness of things, he's more concerned with the howness of things, how you do it. And it takes a major shift of our mental universe to be concerned more and more with a howness. But it's a shift that really pays off. 